I've got duct tape supporting all along the seams. I've got the form back in its place. I'm gonna flip her over and I should be able to do the fill in of the strips and get it ready for glassing. So after rolling out the fiberglass over the wood, I take a little time to smooth it out with a chip paintbrush to get out as many wrinkles as possible. Also, when I'm trimming the edges of the cloth, I want to make sure that I've um, saved uh, nice expanses of cloth that can later be used to glass the internal edges and marry the deck and the hull together. Now putting on the epoxy, the idea is to wet out all of the cloth so it is transparent, but you don't want pooling areas or too much epoxy in any one place. After the glass is wet out, then scraping it clean to get off excess epoxy is an important step. After a couple hours of curing time, you flip the boat over, trim off the excess fiberglass with an X-Acto knife, and then I use uh, masking tape to cover the edges whenever I throw the deck back on so I can glass the deck. I let the masking tape stick out a little bit so it acts as a drip edge so that when I epoxy the deck, it doesn't drip down onto the hull. At this point, I'm putting in copious amounts of wood filler to fill in some of those gaps. I've got my printed cool logo that I'm gonna put somewhere up in this area to make kind of like a cool surfboard logo. Um, so there will be a layer of epoxy gluing this down to the wood, which will make it mostly transparent, and then a layer of fiberglass on top of it. So I'll show what that looks like. So I have a whole separate video on using rice paper and uh, epoxy for graphics on wood if you're interested in this, and it's detailed greatly there. But uh, this is just a real simple process that adds a cool way to add graphics to your board. Here's what I really like about using this method is on wood, the color is semi-transparent and you can see the grain of the wood comes right through the logo. Um, so when this gets uh, fiberglassed underneath there, that's gonna look really cool. Um, with the solid uh, black lines like I did on the woody logo on the back, um, it doesn't show through as much, but that is exactly what I was hoping for. Like it. And the process for glassing the deck is the same as glassing the hole, taking care not to get epoxy down, dripping onto the hole underneath. You're going to want to pay attention to what kind of epoxy you're using and uh, what kind of hardener you're mixing with it based on the conditions in your shop and things. Now I'm using West Systems Epoxy with the 207 Clear Hardener because it dries completely clear so you get the full effect of the wood. Okay, so I've now got one full coat, uh, one layer of six ounce fiberglass on both the hull and the exterior of the deck. Um, I really like, now it's fun because you can see the color that's gonna come through. The epoxy darkens the wood a little bit like a stain and the just the difference in the strips on the right side really do look like a little racing stripe down the side, which came out really nice. I'm really pleased with my logo as it comes through there. Um, so, and then of course I've got the graphics on the back here for Woody. Um, now it's gonna be letting these totally cure and then busting uh, them off of the form and fiberglass on the inside will be the next steps. So now to separate the nose and the transom from the form, it has to be cut through the wooden dowel, which uh, was the nice part of this design using the conduit steel made it very easy. Okay, so here's a little update where we're at right now. I've got a fully fiberglass deck and hull. 
Um, you can see the hole, it does have a lot of uh, wood filler in those corners where I knew that I was gonna have some troubles, but the next step is going to be to um, sand down the insides. And there you can see where there's filler in those corners from the inside range, but it's also the inside fiberglass is where the board's gonna have most of its structural integrity. So um, the outside cosmetics don't really matter that much at all right now. It's just kind of holding the board together. Um, but now as I glass the inside of the deck is where I'm gonna build it really thick. I'm gonna reinforce the spots that need reinforcing. And then the fun part is going to be cutting a hatch in the deck so that I can actually access the inside of the board as I glue the top and the bottom together and seal them together with fiberglass on the inside. Once that's done, then I can um, clean up the sides really well and uh, match them perfectly, sand them down, and add more fiberglass to glue the deck and the um, hull together from the outside. And then we're gonna have some corner uh, problems to fill in here on the edges where the top meets the deck because of the different shape that the um, um, forms took. Now, temperature's really cold outside around here. It's in the teens. So one risk that you have, if you have a lot of days in between your working days and you've got a half fiberglass and half uh, raw wood uh, panels here, um, you gotta be careful leaving them off them for many days at a time because with temperature changes, this thing will fold up like a dead leaf if you're not careful. Um, also, once I get the inside and the outside fiberglass, I'll put them on the form and tie them down on the form to help maintain their shape before they're uh, totally fiberglass together, and that should hopefully keep it functional. So, um, cosmetically, the board looks pretty cool so far. Uh, like I said, it's mainly about structure right now. The, uh, the, all the cosmetics will come into play more in the end once I get uh, the shell completely built and the hatch put in. Anyway, going well. So just like the external surfaces, the internal surfaces need to be sanded smooth with the orbital sander. Uh, that way you get a good adhesion of your fiberglass and epoxy. So after about just 10 minutes of sanding, you can see I've done a big section here on the stern section compared to the bow section. And what I'm doing is just making little circles with a 60 grit uh, sandpaper on an orbital sander, and I'm just smoothing tra the transitions between the separate uh, pieces of wood. I'm not really getting the whole surface entirely flat. What you really want for the interior inside of the boat is just a good surface for adhesion of the uh, epoxy and the uh, fiberglass. So this is not going to take super long. You don't need to be super perfectionist about it. Now those big ridges that I have in the corner, I'm going to have to probably get my fine sander out or something a little bit different or maybe even uh, use some pocket knife in and stuff by home to smooth out those edges or with the edges of the um, orbital sander. But I'm giving this maybe half an hour for an hour of work to make this done. Moving on to fiberglassing the inside of the deck. It is the same process as the exterior. And now the inside of the hull gets the same treatment. It's pretty easy to spread epoxy with a squeegee down the flat surfaces, but to get into the corners and up on the edges, I use a chip paintbrush to wet out the fiberglass. After a couple hours curing, you can trim the edges of the remaining fiberglass.
Okay, so the woody's starting to come together here. I now have inside and outside layers of six ounce fiberglass. Um, there's tons of imperfections, which are all fine. I can look look around at this point. I'm not worried about, um, we're gonna get it all to come together in the end. Um, one thing to mention now is that it's important to use the forms to hold the inside of the, um, of the hull and keep it from, from curling in on itself. So without the forms in here, uh, the hull wants to be a little bit uh, more narrow and you can't really get the, the sides of the deck to match it. But um, now I've got some big decisions to make. It's time to figure out where I'm gonna put the hatch for the battery compartment. So I gotta decide on the size, the width, everything where it's gonna be, and then I've gotta figure out a method that I'm gonna place a um, shelf to rest the hatch on and the hinges and latching mechanism. Uh, so that's kind of next on my agenda. Plus in the area, now these are, these are nice and strong and I can throw these around without any problem, um, which is nice. Uh, but down in here, I've got to create a base plate and glue in, I believe I'm gonna use just some three quarter inch uh, sanded plywood as a reception plate for where the uh, mast of the foil is gonna mount at about 12 inches in on the flat part here. Uh, and I've got to kind of troubleshoot how that's gonna happen. So I want to, I want to have that done uh, before marrying the deck and the hull together. Plus, I'm probably gonna put a reinforcement strip of uh, the six ounce uh, fiberglass right down the middle too for some extra rigidity, both on the um, underside of the deck and the uh, inside of the hull. So two more little layers of fiberglass. We'll cut a hole for the hatch and for the um, battery compartment, but I like where I'm at right now. So I did add a nearly complete second layer of fiberglass to the inside of the hull. And I also reinforce the deck as well. And stay tuned for part five where we will get into the battery hatch and marrying the two pieces together.